Gun, tying up Cannizzaro, forcing the pass. Now good ball movement here, gets a look at a goal! And a space created, balls in the back of the net. What's going on everybody, I'm Patrick from Powlax, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you the Denver end line play. So this is a play that Denver used in the 2015 National Championship game to help them beat Maryland. So they ended up winning the game 10-5, to winning the national title, and this was just a play that really caught my eye because it worked extremely well, and it's absolutely brilliant, all the way down to how they scouted Maryland to figure out which players would draw which matchups, where to put them on the field, and how to free up their best shooter, Wesley Berg, so he could take a step down shot from eight to 10 yards. Because I like this play so much, I implemented it with the high school team and it worked wonders. It worked against man to man, it worked against zones, and anytime we really needed a goal late in a game or at any time really, we could absolutely run this play. Then another thing that I noticed is as teams began to scout us, they would take away a specific part of this play, which opened up another element of the play that we found out about later. So we're going to go through all of that here. As you're watching this video, if you want to follow along on a playbook PDF, you can do that by clicking this link up here in the corner, going to patreon.com slash and becoming a patron. This play will be a part of the $3 tier, which includes a bunch of other set plays and all of the drills. Finally, before we get started with the play, I just wanted to say thank you to all of the patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate the support and I hope that you really value those playbook PDFs. So the first thing that we have to get into for the Denver end line play is the setup. And so Denver is run out of a 1-4-1 one, one, and a bunch of the personnel and positions are very specific. So we're going to go from the bottom up. So A2 behind, he's going to be our best dodger. This was Connor Canizero for Denver. Next, on this side, this is going to be our best picking player, someone who can draw attention to get his own player inside and then set a good pick. I believe that was Tyler Pace. Um, inside here, this is going to be our best feeder. A3 is going to be our player with the quickest hands, someone who can catch a ball and get a shot off. This was Wesley Berg for Denver. M2 is going to be a player who can catch and move the ball very quickly. And finally, M1 up top is going to be our best midfielder, someone who is definitely going to draw our LSM matchup. And this is extremely important that our LSM ends up up here because we really want to make sure that M2 has a shorty and M3 has a shorty so that as they are catching and moving the ball, there's not a long pull on them who could screw up our ball movement. Now let's get into the actual play. So because we have two separate options for this play, we're going to go through the initial motions, talk about exactly what we're trying to do, and then we'll go through how the play actually finishes up. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is some off ball movement. We wanna end up freeing up A3 or Wesley Berg. So the first thing that we are gonna do is we're gonna have him come up and he's gonna set an up pick right here on the LSM so that M1 can cut down this way. This is gonna draw a lot of attention to the right side of the field, and it's really going to help to free up our final shooter. The next thing that we're gonna have is A2 as he's dodging. So the first thing we want him to do is we want him to come up, dodge to his left, and then roll back to his right. Now, we don't need him to beat his man, so he can kind of stay wide. We really just need him to have his hands free. The next thing we're gonna have working with A2 is M2. He is going to come down, moving outside, and go around A2. And this is because A2 is going to either flip him the ball or fake the flip. Next, off ball, we have M3. He is going to pop out to back left. And then finally, A1 is going to cut the middle backside so that he draws D1 in. Now, Denver used a lot of off ball picks where they would basically push him into the middle. Now, at the high school level, I think you might get an interference call, but because of the physical nature of college lacrosse, you can see them actually pushing the players in. So I'm gonna talk about a couple other aspects of this. What we wanna do with this M1 cut is we want to generate the switch through D3. So if A3 can set a good enough pick on L1 so that we generate this switch, it's really gonna help us as we get to freeing up A3. The next little aspect I want to make clear with our initial motion is that as these two players are moving towards each other, we really want to make it look like this cut can be fed by A2, and we really just want to draw a ton of attention over here because we're going to end up finishing up here. 
take note of exactly where these players are ending up because I'm going to change it. And now you see exactly where all of the players end up after our initial motion. A couple things about where these players ended up. DM2, who is defending M2, is going to try to come under M2 because as a part of how the play worked, the defensive midi isn't really going to chase M2 all the way down into the corner because he's not dangerous at that spot. Now we're going to get into exactly how the play finishes up when Denver runs it. So first, A2 still has the ball, but as these two cross, he's going to flip the ball to M2 as they cross. And this is why M2 has to stay wide is so that the defenseman doesn't follow him there and so he can receive this flip. M2 is then going to throw a pass immediately to M3. As all of this is happening, A3, who just picked for M1, M1 is going to continue his cut, A3 is now going to cut around a pick set by A1 around here and then receive a pass from M3, catch the ball, and shoot. So one of the things that I kind of skipped and glossed over was the fact that A1 should be setting this pick on L1. So another thing that he can also do is he can just pick D1 inside. Oftentimes when our players didn't run it quite right, this defenseman kind of just showed into space here and ruined our plan and ruined the play. So if he can push his own man in and then step out to pick L1, that will really help. But for the most part at the high school level, L1 never really stayed with A3 all the way through. It was always just the defenseman here who would end up screwing up the play. The other thing I want to make note of is the defensive middies. So since M2 was guarded by a defensive midi, he can easily catch this pass and move the ball. Now M3, also guarded by a defensive midi, he has a short stick on him so that he can easily pass the ball. Because we switched around some of our personnel, we sometimes had a pull in this position, and that was another one of the ways that teams really screwed up what we wanted to do because our player tried to feed it inside and they just knocked it down. So having a short stick here and a short stick here is very important. Now we're just gonna run through the entire play. So ball went out on the end line, our players get set up, they get into their positions, a2 begins by dodging to his left, rolling back to his right. M2 comes outside to receive the flip. As this is happening, A3 is setting an up pick on L1, and M1 is cutting down the field, drawing as much attention as he can, trying to generate the switch from D3. Also, as this is happening, M3 is stepping out the backside, and A1 is going to cut the middle or push D1 into the middle. Now, as A2 reaches M2, he's going to flip the ball, M2 is going to catch it, move it to M3, and now, as this is happening, A3 is going to come off of his pick, come around A1's pick, and receive a feed from M3 here, catch the ball, and shoot. Now we're gonna watch DU do this in action as well as a few times we hit it with our high school team. We're gonna watch DU execute this twice, once from this regular view and another time from an overhead view. From this view, I want you to really keep an eye on how quickly the ball moves, and then in the next view, you can see all of the picking motion inside that gets Westberg free. First thing we notice is that we are definitely in our one for one set. So as we start, Canizero goes left, then right, flips the ball, the ball moves immediately to back left and then up to Berg on the wing who shoots and scores. Now from this overhead view, we're really going to see a good example of Westberg setting the pick on the LSM up top and Tyler Pace pushing his own man into the middle, the defense switching again, but it still gives Westberg enough time to get outside to catch the ball and finish. Our first high school example is against man to man. This example is against the zone. Here is another man to man. This one I had to include mostly for the announcer because the announcer at Juan Diego is absolutely hilarious. He's pump action and firing away. Pump action. Go! Oh! 
Pretty sweet play, huh? So as we were running this with our high school team, one of the things that happened is people started to scout us and they tried to destroy the play before it happened. So what they would do is they would put a lot of pressure here. Another one of the changes we had is this was always an attackman, which meant a pole was here. So one thing that they tried was they tried to lock this player off as we were going to make the flip. Everything else remained the same. So A2 dodge to his left, comes back to his right, M2 comes to get the ball, but this time DM2 would lock him off. And so because of that, we couldn't actually make the flip. So now, just to add in all the other spots, A3 would set an up pick, M1 would cut, M3 would pop out to back left, A1 would cut the middle. And now, because we had this locked off, we obviously couldn't throw the flip. So M2 had to make sure he stayed super wide so that DM2 couldn't double A2. And then A2 would just continue to carry the ball. And what we found was absolutely amazing. Because of all this backside motion, there was no one who would actually slide. So the one person who I feel could slide is D3. But because M1 cut so hard and yelled and screamed, he never would come off of M1. And so D3 ended up way down here. And then no slide meant that A2 could really just turn the corner and take a shot. Check out how this looked in the game. Notice as the play is about to start, this defenseman here comes to lock off the player who would usually catch the flip. Because he's locked off, we fake the flip, and now there is no slide ready for the dodge, and we end up scoring. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you truly enjoyed it. Once again, I wanna give a shout out to all the people who are patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to download this playbook PDF and a bunch more, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash and becoming a patron, or just use this link up here and it will take you to the playbook PDF from this video. If you really liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a good one. I will see you in the next video.